so a few seconds have passed for me, but a few days have passed for you. It's time for Etihad, and we're going to review their economy class product on a flight from Beirut to Abu Dhabi to Muscat. Uh, this is part of my first economy week. This is the third episode. So if you have not seen the introduction and my Emirates reviews or my Qatar reviews, make sure to check those out. And of course, subscribe for the conclusion and for future economy weeks. Um, but without further ado, please enjoy the video. To preface this video, I have to say that my Etihad flights ended up being the most surprising of all my Middle Eastern airline flights, and you'll see why by the end of the video. Um, firstly, when I was at Beirut Airport, I made my way to the gate and I realized that they were already boarding and it seemed very early, but to my surprise, they had actually changed the departure time to 25 minutes earlier from the point that they printed my boarding pass. So basically, they explained that the aircraft had landed 40 minutes earlier, hence they'd depart 25 minutes earlier, which doesn't make much sense since it seems like a lot of people would risk missing their flight. Upon boarding, I was told off by the flight attendant for trying to take pictures, and she told me a long elaborate story of how t taking pictures is strictly forbidden in the UAE. She said it very nicely, and she seemed friendly enough, but it was quite a strange situation of her stopping me and telling me a whole anecdotal experience about that. So Etihad's cabin is probably the least distinctive of the three Middle Eastern Airlines. As you can see here, the legroom was the worst of all my flights on Middle Eastern Airlines, unfortunately, and the seats felt about as wide as on the 777s, so not very wide. I did like that the seats in front of me had two pockets, one for smaller devices and one for slightly bigger things. There was also a power port at every seat, USB charging, a code hook, a very large screen, and a touchscreen remote. They do have these really cool headrests that were super sturdy, uh, but non-adjustable. I was also impressed that Etihad had mildly noise-canceling headphones, although the sound was quite bad. The tray table has the same great design as on the other Middle Eastern carriers with a drink and cup holder and an extendable table with several different sizes. One of the coolest things about Etihad Economy, and they market this quite a lot, is their very unique neck pillow which they provide to all passengers in economy. Now it was actually super comfy, the one problem was that it clearly hadn't been replaced since the last flight since there were black hairs all over it. Another great thing about Etihad is that they offer Wi-Fi on board, which is super useful. It's also quite fancy that they have two seat control buttons, one that adjusts the recline and one that adjusts the lumbar support. Unfortunately, there are no air vents, so you can't adjust the temperature on board, which is a bit of a problem on a Middle Eastern Airlines where temperatures at many of their destinations can reach 50 degrees Celsius. Personally, I loved the layout of Etihad's entertainment system. It was responsive and super easy to navigate. The offering wasn't so extensive though, so what they lacked in entertainment they tried to make up for in design, but ultimately that doesn't really work.
As on almost all Dreamliners, Etihad have mood lighting on their 787, which is always a great addition. Interestingly, compared to Emirates and Qatar who mostly had Asian flight attendants, it seemed like the entire crew on this flight was European and African. Another strange area where Etihad seemed to lag behind was that you weren't allowed to use phones during taxi takeoff or landing, even in flight mode, but it's quite a big difference from most other carriers around the world nowadays. Etihad also had ads before their videos, though compared to the other carriers, the ads were only Etihad or Abu Dhabi related. One of the most fascinating things about taking this flight was seeing how the aircraft avoids Israeli airspace. As you'll see soon, at one point we had three countries below us, which all border at the very bottom of Israel where Eilat, Taba, and Aqaba meet. Etihad did not hand out menus, so I'm not really sure what I was given or what the options are. Also, they only had options between orange and apple juice, which is far less choices than the other two airlines had. However, the food was the best of all my flights. While it looks quite basic, the salad to the left was delicious, and to the right was probably the best cooked pasta I've ever had on a plane in a tasty arabiata sauce. They also had metal cutlery. And now for the coolest moment of all my flights, which I admit is not really Etihad related, but below you can see Israel, Jordan, and Egypt all in one shot. Yes, Etihad did offer Wi-Fi, but strangely, even though I performed the exact same tasks as I did on Emirates, the Wi-Fi ran out far more quickly and the quite expensive package I'd paid for was drained within an hour while the same package lasted me throughout the entire 6 hour flight on Emirates. The pre-landing preparation started 30 minutes before arrival and they even turned off the in-flight entertainment system so there was no chance of continuing to watch even if you had your own headphones. Check out how cool the bathroom is. So I should mention that this is supposedly the exact same seat design Etihad have on their A380s as well. Now's a good chance for you to check out the recline. While it was decent, the limited legroom really still didn't make it that comfortable. So after all my flying, this night in Abu Dhabi was actually the first night I spent in a real bed after all these flights. So I was exhausted and so excited to finally stay at a hotel. The arrival process in Abu Dhabi airport was actually quite easy, though it was still very crowded. 
It wasn't until the next day that I realized what a mess Abu Dhabi Airport is. I know they're building an entirely new terminal and I have very high hopes for that, but at the moment, this was truly one of the worst airports I've ever connected flights in. The layout is quite chaotic, there is a huge lack of elevators and escalators, and all the food places were concentrated in one little dining area. The two most unfortunate things were that the airport was super hot. I don't know if their air conditioners were broken or if they even have air conditioners, but it was not so pleasant walking around there with your bags and feeling like you were basically outdoors. Secondly, two entire toilets were broken, so I had to walk for 15 minutes each way to get to the nearest toilet just because I needed to go before I boarded my flight. That was about a 25 minute excursion just to go to the bathrooms, which seems absolutely ridiculous. Just like with Qatar, we had to board via stairs, but this time, at least they were a little funky. The problem was that they caused a huge backup, so some people ended up standing on the stairs for five minutes in the scorching Middle Eastern summer heat before we could get on the aircraft. So I'm not gonna lie, some aspects of their seat on the A320 was actually more comfortable than their seat on the 787. The legroom was quite good, there was still a pocket for phones in the seat back pocket. The tray table also had a cup holder, though it wasn't adjustable in several different sizes. As you saw a few seconds ago, the headrest was also adjustable in many different ways. We were served a refreshing towel and water before departure. There was even a little slide out remote on this flight, though unfortunately the entertainment system was turned off since our flight time was only 40 minutes. The crew came around and said banana, cake, and water. It turns out it was just banana cake and water, but oh well, it's still nice for a 40 minute flight. You could tell this A320 was ancient by looking at the lavatory. Here you can see the recline on the seat, which was actually very good for an A320. So how were my flights with Etihad overall? I'd say that they were actually quite disappointing. 
I really got the impression that this is an airline that values style over substance. While the food was good and the crews were friendly overall, I was a little disappointed by the Wi-Fi, the entertainment systems, and especially Abu Dhabi Airport. Honestly, I can't really say that I'd rather choose Etihad over a European airline, and I'd actually rather choose Lufthansa or Finnair if going from Europe to Asia. I hope you all enjoyed this video, the last part of my first economy week before the big comparison which will be up very soon. Make sure you subscribe so you can be the first to see it. And of course, give this video a thumbs up, comment below what you thought, and check out my social media where I'm uploading tons of cool pictures from this trip. Thanks so much for watching as always guys, and until I see you all next time, fly safe.